welcome everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, today is day 40 since Hurricane Devil Dorian struck us. 40 days and 40 nights. Come up in the New and Old Testament, in Exodus, Genesis, Deuteronomy. God seems to have chosen this number to help emphasize times of trouble and hardship. And we have certainly all been in the wilderness. This was an apocalyptic storm. And I thought this would be an appropriate moment to reflect on where we were and how far we've come in these 40 days. From September 1st through to September 3rd, Hurricane Dorian pounded Abaco and Grand Bahama for over 30 hours, the biggest storm on record in history. 70% of our island was underwater and many people lost everything. For the first time, many tragically lost their lives and loved ones. And other survivors had terrifying, life-altering experiences that can never be forgotten. We've never before witnessed the complete destruction of the airport, the water plant, and hospital. In fact, our president, Ian Roll, in one of our darkest moments, had to arrange the evacuation of bodies from the morgue of the hospital. Nothing can prepare you for a storm like this. The massive destruction of vehicles meant even once the roads were cleared, transport became an issue. Regular day jobs go out of the window and other things move to the forefront. Rescue, medical services, deliveries of oil for backup generators, provision of water, bringing relief supplies and equipment into the ports of entry, distribution of reef supplies, restoration of critical infrastructure, even security. Now as we approach the second phase of Dorian's tragic and turbulent chapter and try to begin a new, a new phase of remediation and rebuilding, a slow return to a sense of normality. But of course it's impossible to go from naught to ten in one single bound. It'll take time. Here at the Port Authority, employees lost family and loved ones. Franklin Pinder and Raquel Smith at Lusco have 16 missing family members still. Stacy Isaacs went completely underwater in her car and owes her life to her son who pulled her out. Tammy Pratt's daughter, son-in-law and grandchildren were on a roof for 30 hours and clinging to a coconut tree. Their mother slipped out of their grasp. Others, like Shante Stewart and Mabel Bridgewater, lost their houses and are living with relations or in temporary rooms. Executives such as Derek Newbold, head of new business development, lost his house and all his belongings. Dudley Francis and Donovan Cox in the GBPA Building and Development Department lost their houses and all their belongings. Our general counsel, Carla McIntosh, has a broken leg. Most, at a minimum, had two to three feet of flooding in their residences. The room that we are now sitting in today had three to four feet of water in it. Did we fail to open our doors and communicate in the first days? Yes, frankly, initially we were overwhelmed. And for that we apologize. It's tough to solve that need for communication when telephones, television, radio, walkie-talkies, satellite phones aren't operational. And it turned out that WhatsApp was a, a godsend. But I want to say a deep thank you to our partners like Lou Carroll and Jason Albury uh, and the team at Sanitation Services and many others in our community like Brad Thompson, Paul Meller, others who don't want to be mentioned, 
uh, the defense force and the police who rushed out on jet skis and boats even before the all clear, risking their lives to rescue people stranded on rooftops. Our partners, sanitation services, were on the streets clearing the road as soon as the all clear was given. Lou Carroll and his team have performed a simply incredible superhuman job. They've worked around the clock, island wide, even rebuilding the road that cut off the East End for a short while after the hurricane. They deserve special recognition and many, many accolades, even though they're very modest and never ask for it. And we're proud to have them as our partners. Equally, our city manager, Troy McIntosh, who you'll hear from, has worked tirelessly round the clock behind the scenes, and Nakira Wilshcombe. Other local entities, like Polymers, Rotary, individuals like John Hines of BIT, Grand Bahama Shipyard, cruise lines like Carnival and Royal Caribbean, Tropical Shipping, Hutchison, Bahamas Adventures, Coral Vita, Falco, and many, many others, too many to mention again, have gone above and beyond. But as Baroness Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, said a few days ago on her visit here, these storms are too big for any one of us or even one Caribbean nation to handle in isolation. And we saw the world extend their hand to us. The United States, the United Kingdom, Israel, and a host of selfless NGOs rushed to our aid. Their help has been invaluable and will never be forgotten. A new resiliency plan can only work with their expertise and input. And I'd like to congratulate and thank our government for facilitating this. And what I hear over and over again from our visitors is the extraordinary sense of community that they found here. The wonderful way in which we help each other, our strong belief and faith. How kind and welcoming we are. We're very grateful to Samaritan's Purse for the relief and the emergency hospital facilities they provided, to Mercy Corps and Siemens, to UNICEF, to ISRA Aid, to ADRA and Water Mission, Seminoles, International Medical Corps, Global Medical Corps, Team Rubicon UK, Team Rubicon US, SPB, Hope Force, and again, many other, part, uh, many other groups that have partnered with Grand Bahama teams and the Grand Bahama Utility Company these last 40 days and ongoing. The Grand Bahama Power Company stands out and we should all thank their brave team and their parent Canadian utility giant, Amero. One of the best decisions we and Henry and I personally ever made was to welcome Emera into the Grand Bahama Power Company in 2008. They have transformed our electricity grid and proved themselves loyal friends to Grand Bahama in good times and bad, including during Hurricane Matthew when our whole transmission distribution system was destroyed and had to be rebuilt. So this is round two for the electricity company. And once again, they've been equal to the task. I'd like to thank and congratulate the whole GBPC team and Dave McGregor, CEO, and you, Filcher, for their superb service to this island. And also on their safety performance, which was impeccable. Let none of us forget what it was like to be in the dark and living on generators. On the water front, Garon Turnquest and Remy Wilshcombe will confirm, you'll hear from them, that the Grand Bahama Utility Company is back to pumping 7 million gallons per day, as we did prior to the hurricane. Running water is free of charge, and so nobody is receiving a water bill for this period of time. Our well fields and aquifers suffered a catastrophic flooding right up 
to the ceiling of the plants, uh, some 28 foot high, thick mud covering all the equipment. And today, the tap water provided is safe for sanitary purposes, washing, bathing, doing dishes. But the salt content remains too high to be drinkable due to the massive seawater incursion. <clears throat> And when you think that our aquifers are not like wells in, in other countries that are sometimes 60 foot deep or 100 foot deep, our aquifers are only three to six foot deep. So they are vulnerable to this, this kind of tsunami that occurred. Um, and now hydro hydrologists and hydrogeologists uh, have been on the ground to help us evaluate and to rethink through a phenomenon that we've never before seen on this scale. So again, today I'd like to, to recognise and thank those members of the Grand Bahama Water Utility Company for working day and night to get the city water supply restored. They had to work in incredibly difficult circumstances. And um, some like Remy, Wilchcombe, Mark Pender and LaQuint Sawyer lost their houses completely. But they put their personal loss aside and left their families to come in and do their work starting the next morning. On the ports of entry side, the harbour and container port are back in business. In fact, Carnival Cruise Lines have returned to these shores this very day. And Paradise Cruise is already here. The Grand Bahama shipyard is working on its first ship repairs since the storm. But as I mentioned, and you know, both the domestic and international terminal suffered catastrophic damage to all buildings and facilities and equipment. It is of course a priority to open the airport to international commercial flights again. And I'm happy to say Godfrey Smith, CEO of the Airport and Harbour Company, is here today and will bring you some good news on that front. Happily, our major project, the new Carnival Cruise Port, which I personally and the GBPA are extremely proud of, is ongoing. Carnival signed a heads of agreement with the government attended by the Prime Minister here in Freeport just two weeks ago after the storm September 25th. So this is still very much on track. Ian Roll and Diane Seymour will speak to tourism and the resilience of our licensees uh, and to other GBPA initiatives going forward. Also very importantly, the project spurred by our hurricane relief consultant, Willie Moss, myself and my brother, Henry, in 2016 after Hurricane Matthew has borne fruit in the creation of the Grand Bahama Disaster Relief Foundation. And my brother Henry will speak to that in terms of ongoing relief efforts. We're very confident that this will be a valuable a valuable entity and organization going forward uh, to help bridge some of the funding gaps and bring um, in the next phase uh, help with reconstruction. Again we deeply appreciate the support, understanding and courage shown by everyone in the community. Uh, we'd like to thank you for helping us to do our job during this very difficult time the pace of recovery has been remarkable in these last 40 days when, as Amit will show you, you realise just how much of our island was underwater. We should be proud and we need to be patient and positive. As Baroness Scotland said, climate change is not game over, it's game on. So we can do this and may God bless us all.